Hi, Wade Kawasaki here, and thank you for joining us on this Car Guy adventure. And we've really got a special segment for you today. I am here in Santa Clarita, California at Galpin Motorsports, Santa Clarita, Porsche. And I'm here with Joe Alice, the general manager. And, and really, we've been able to look at what Bo Bachman's creativity can do when you open up a Porsche store. And, uh, you know, I appreciate uh, Bo as a colleague as well as I, I was able to purchase my Ford GT through Galpin Motorsports. So really appreciate them, as I, me as a customer as, as well as a big fan of everything they do. And, you know, we really know Bo's creativity and the hot rods that he builds and the race cars that he does. And this Porsche store, just amazing. I, I mean, I've never heard of Porsche letting anyone do what they've let you guys do. And, and, and that's like a once in a lifetime worldwide thing that, that a, a very first here in Santa Clarita. Joe, can you tell us a little bit about what got, what, what did it take to get to where you are now? It, it took quite a bit of doing. Um, the, the fact that, uh, that the Bachmann family uh, originates from Stuttgart, Germany, uh, was certainly helpful, and uh, Bo's vision and his his motivation and, and just his, his, his excitement mm. about the Porsche brand uh, really did help us over the edge. So Porsche took a specific liking to us and, of course, have given us uh, liberties that I don't believe they've given anyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and, and this, this store is beautiful. And uh, we're going to get to the Wunderground here. Das shortly. Wunderground, yeah. Das Wunderground. Yeah. But first, why don't you give us a quick kind of look around the showroom, and then we'll we'll get down, to, uh, we'll get in that elevator and go downstairs. Absolutely, Wade. Every part of the dealership was designed ergonomically with the flow of the of the customer and the client and guest, because we have a multitude of services here. We needed to accommodate all of those. Uh, we have a service drive, which is easily accessible. Mm -hmm. You're greeted at the service drive by one of our service advisors, one of our Porter teams, valet teams, where the car is sanitized now with oh, COVID. Nice. We're, we're extremely cautious. We make sure that every touch point is cleaned and sanitized and everybody's safe. We keep our employees safe and we keep our clients safe as well. Um, we have probably, well, we do have the only Porsche design studio in a dealership in California. It's one of two in the country. Wow. Uh, so the only other Porsche design store that I know of is on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. So we also, if you'd like to take yes, a look, yes, cool. let's show you that. Every Porsche dealership is required to have some level of Porsche driver selection, which is an accessory line. Uh -huh. uh, it's mostly cups and glasses, models, some clothing, but the Porsche design studio is something that's very special for mm. us. It, it too required specific approval. And here we, we feature the Porsche design luggage, Porsche design clothing, fragrances, uh, shoe wear, wow. all of the eyewear, uh, both sunglasses, reading glasses, and of course their, their signature pens and lighters and wrist watches as well. So we carry all of that merchandise and we ship it worldwide. Uh, a lot and of is times- is that a Porsche design hookah? That is a Porsche design <laughs> hookah. Happens to be a good seller. One of the other things that we featured here at the dealership is a place where people can see their Porsche being worked on as they wait. So everybody wants to see how their baby's being treated. Right. And we, we believe that these are their babies. And Porsche always regards the workshop as the kitchen. So it's important that we always keep our kitchen clean and that our guests get a chance to see how our technicians uh, do that as well. It keeps them on their toes and it keeps the client well informed. They see the car being worked on and uh, obviously uh, the guys do their very, very best to, uh, to keep their car clean and uh, show them that they have just as much love for their baby as the owner does. And it makes me feel good. There's even an early long hood Porsche here. So <laughs> good for you guys. So exactly. not only are you doing servicing modern cars, but also vintage cars. We, we have classic trained technicians here. Oh, okay. So we offer a classic program uh, for our, um, our classic car owners, Porsche club members, things like that. Very so. nice. If you follow me, I'll show you one of the other features that we have here. 
We are the only Porsche dealership that has a full service restaurant within it. Mm. This is the Box and Stop restaurant. <laughs> box and Stop is pit stop in German. Okay. Uh, there is another Box and Stop restaurant in the world, and that is at the museum in oh, Zofenhausen. Okay. I've been there. So, it's a great museum. It, it is a phenomenal yeah. museum um, where we offer some fresh baked goods. We have a full menu from Eggs Benedict to, uh, to brats and sausages and pretzels and German favorites as well as some American favorites too. Well, now, so, Tim, I, I know where we're going to eat lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And this is always a fun thing if we, we, we offer uh, uh, club uh, events here as well as uh, community events and we're always willing to help any way we can. That's awesome. One of the other things I want to show you is our amazing wow. <laughs> glass floor. The glass floor is actually the portal to the Wunderground Museum, something that, that Bo envisioned with Eddie Soto, one of our designers. And um, again, it's very unique. Under glass, you see the beautiful 2020 Porsche 935. That always lets our, our visitors know that there's something extra and special going on down there. Yeah, that, that is absolutely super special. And I love that new version of the 935. It's just, just so awesome looking. It is artistry and carbon it fiber. Is, it is, and, and I'm so <laughs> glad we're gonna actually go down there and be able to take a look at that here in a yeah, minute. Yeah, we're, we're gonna save that for you. All right. Uh, some of the other highlights of our, of our showroom. Uh -huh. um, this is called a generation four but it does have styling cues from the Generation 5. Okay. One of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that our salespeople had an intimate connection with their guests. Yes. And so we opted for the Generation 4 style of sales desks. I see. The colors that you see and most of the motif is Gen 5. Uh -huh. So we're sort of a hybrid. We're I sort see. of a, yeah. a Gen 4 right. and a half. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so as you know, every Porsche is bespoken to its owner. Right. So every car that we build here, we normally spend time in our fitting lounge. I'm sure you've seen the fitting lounge before. I have. Uh, these are the colors, the textures, what things feel like, what things look like. If you could imagine it in Porsche, we could build it for you. Very just nice. like just like Galp and Gas. Right. Yep. If you could dream it, we could build yep. it. Well, if, if if Porsche can't build it, then we send it over to Gas and they'll build it for us. So this includes all the latest colors and textures and uh, of course the woods and the different brushed steels and aluminums. So if we were to come in here, Joe, and, and order a Porsche, pick the exterior colors, interior trim, exterior trim, how long would it take from the time we order it to the time we'd actually get that car? Normally the build process is somewhere between 12 and 16 weeks. Oh, that's the, a lot shorter than I thought it was. It, it, depends yeah. on the, it depends on the level of customization. Okay. There are times that you might pick an option that the factory has a delay on for whatever reason, mm -hmm. but uh, under normal circumstances, it's between 12 and 16 weeks. Which really isn't a whole lot. No, to it isn't. Ask. That's yeah. That's a. Of really course, we also time. offer delivery in Europe. Yes. As well as the PEC in LA or the PEC in Atlanta. Okay. You could take delivery at either one of those three locations, as well as here. If you choose here, we have our dedicated delivery area. This is where you would pick up your beautiful new Porsche. <laughs> oh, the Porsche would actually be in here. Your car oh, would be wonderful. right here after, yeah. you, after you signed up all your paperwork. What a great way you, to deliver a car. You would take delivery here in this special room. This screen that you see on the wall acts not only for information from Porsche corporate, but also we will preview anything that we show you on the car, you'll see on that screen while you're taking delivery. We offer a second delivery because of today's technology. Uh -huh. It could be tricky. So we don't like to overload you at one time, uh, but of course we have, uh, we have classes here, we have second deliveries here, and of course we use this screen for that reason. What a wonderful thing to be able to like, order the car here, look at the car, test drive it, and then even get the opportunity to have a European delivery, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And upon European delivery, the car always comes back here, and then we do our own delivery as well. We personalize it to the end user. Nice, and where is the European delivery? Where does that take place? Uh, it could take place in one of three different locations in Europe, depending on the car that you choose. Um, it could happen at the port, it could happen in Zuffenhausen if it's a sports car, or Leipzig if it's a Panamera Macan or Cayenne. Nice, nice. 
So, <sighs> if you care to, we will venture below ground. Yes, I care to. <laughs> <laughs> Into das Wunderground. Yes. Because this is wonderful, but Das is going to be really wonderful. <laughs> Even more, <laughs> yes. more Das wonderful. <laughs> Sir. So the Galvin Porsche of Underground is the only privately owned, publicly accessible Porsche exclusive display in the country. Um, we offer tours and, and, uh, and uh, we welcome families and Porsche enthusiasts, all, enthousi all car you. enthusiasts alike, to come and visit our Wonderground. Some of the cars we feature here are very, very special. There are one of a kinds. There are limited production cars like the 935 that you see here. This is the second edition of the 935. These cars originally start out as GT2 RSs, mm, okay. which we also happen to have over there. Right. Um, and the cars are built to spec as the end user would like it, just like every other Porsche. Uh, you can get it with an optional passenger seat if you choose. Okay. If you have anyone who dares to sit right. with you. Uh, but if you notice, they, they incorporate three different weaves of carbon fiber on this mm. car. There's a wide weave, which is lighter, that's either in the rear fairing or the nose. There's a box weave, which happens to be stronger, which is on both doors. And then there's a tight weave on the very extreme surface, like on that rear wing. Right. As you know, at top speed, almost all the weight of the back end is on Isn't that rear wing. Yeah. So they want to make sure it flexes very little and that it's very durable. Gorgeous car. Just spectacular. Just really love every part of it. I mean, they've really yeah. done a great job of still paying homage to the original 935s, but making it so modern and unique. I mean, what a great, uh, wonderful balance of being able to, to achieve both of those things. And I love the, the is, I don't know if it's just on this one or is it on all of them, but the combination of the dull carbon fiber, the matte finish, and then the gloss carbon fiber really makes the car just striking. It, it was well thought out. Yeah. You know, it, these cars take anywhere from 14 to 18 months to complete. Uh, there will be 77 of these cars that will be completed after all is said and done. What happens is, of the 1,000 GT2 RSs that are built, right. 77 of those or are, are getting it pulled. Okay. Absolutely. They right. pull them from the line, uh -huh. and they make 935s out of them. So, so is there going to be a race series that Porsche is going to do with these? I don't know. Okay. I can only hope. Yeah, me too. You know, IMSA, if IMSA has their way, I'm sure they will. Yeah. Uh, some of the other features that we have here in the Wonderground Museum, um, we have a 1948 Porsche Speedster replica. This is, a, this, is a, um, this is the prototype that was built in Gmund, Austria. Mm. And um, it's, it, there, there were 16 of these cars that were built. This is number one in the production wow. series. Um, th this is not the original Speedster that's still back in, in Germany, but if you look at our video long enough, you'll actually see Ferdinand Porsche driving this 1948 wow. Speedster replica. Now this was Ferdinand Porsche's uh, creation, that's but it was correct. before Porsche was a Porsche, is that correct? It is so before Porsche was a Porsche, <laughs> it does not have a hood crest. Oh, the yeah. crest had actually not appeared until 1952 on the center of the steering wheel. I see. This car has been updated and fitted with a later model steering wheel. I see. So wow. if you notice, there's no crest, right. which didn't really happen until uh, Max Hoffman sat with uh, Porsche at the Club 21 restaurant in New York. And he sketched and it, sketched on, it a, out, on a cocktail yeah. napkin. Mm -hmm. Next to it is one of the last, if not the last 964 Speedsters mm. that rolled off the assembly line. That's an unrestored car. So it's uh, completely original with the exception of one item. We added the new updated Porsche Bluetooth navigation radio to mm. it, which is a factory, uh, a factory upgrade. So what you see on the wall here uh -huh. may not appear to be very special, but this holographic projection oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This shows the iconic shape over yes. time. That is and very cool. This appears in three places, here in Santa Clarita of all uh -huh. places, the Peterson Museum, and the museum in Zuffenhausen. Those are the only three places where you could actually see the body style grow and evolve over time. 
That's a great optic, and I do remember seeing it in Zuffenhausen. Yeah, it, uh, but that is such a great graphic, and it really shows how they've been able to continue that line and and uh, still make it look like a 911, that's it. but uh, but really modernize it as it goes. Just a it, it's, great job. It's an absolutely familiar, iconic shape. Yeah. One of the other features we have here is a car that was driven by Patrick Dempsey, the mm. actor. Mm -hmm. Um, in 2008, he won the 24 Hours of Le Mans in this exact car. Wow. This is, uh, it's one of those cars that, it, it, it's just amazing that, that they built a flying door stopper like this. Right. And it's just, it, and you can get the feel of it. What I want you to do is I, I want you to open the door. Okay. I want you to open that door like you'd open any other door and let me know what you think. Wow. That is <laughs> light. That's light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is an amazing car. It's a real treat for us to have this, so we're very, very, very grateful. Very cool. Super light door. Everything about this car is very special. And there is one feature on this car that I happen to think the world of. You know, uh, uh, pit crews on these teams are not just kids that are on a summer vacation from college. They're architectural engineers, they're technical engineers, mechanical engineers, but they still need to be reminded which way that lug nut comes off. <laughs> I always get so a kick out of that. So this is the actual car that won. This is the actual off. car. Oh my goodness. The only modification on this car is the front bumper was replaced because after 24 hours of Le Mans, they get pretty chopped up. So I'll never be able to drive a 24 hour Le Mans winning car, but can I sit in one for a you moment? You certainly can. And it's so easy to get in and out of. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is just amazing. That car is you, Wade. It is, it's all me. And I, I guess there's hope because at 24 Le Mans, they have to have an amateur driver exactly. in the car, so there, there's there always hope for me at, at some day. There and you so go. If you're a high dollar sponsor and you want to put me in the car, I'd be glad to, to give it my all. This is uh, just an amazing feel. Thank you for letting me get in. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. See how easy it is to get in and out. <laughs> Actually, I should have put my legs out first. We give you contortionist lessons. Yeah. <laughs> so we also have a tribute to the Porsche technology. Porsche was the first luxury SUV to have a plug-in hybrid. And of course, we have the Taycan which is the latest and greatest all-electric Porsche. Seen here in a metallic black. And Porsche has come so far in the electric yes. car Yes, oh yeah, absolutely. And, you, know, you know, truly building a luxury plug-in electric car, it's just, it's yeah. gorgeous. We were just looking at uh, one up in the showroom and I'm, I'm just falling in love with this car. You know, I think once people get past their range anxieties, yeah. I think, I think we're going to see a lot more of these on the road. What we have here is a tribute to some of the limited production Porsches. Mm -hmm. We have a GT2 RS that you see here that was uh, once celebrity owned. It is shown here in fashion gray, which is a color to sample. As you know, Porsche right. will paint exactly. any color that you yeah. like. And this is one of those colors, uh, fashion mm -hmm. gray. Next to it is the uh, Turbo S exclusive. Uh, which they built only 500 mm -hmm. of. This is golden yellow color, and um, this is number 476 out of the 500 cars in the production run worldwide. So both of these cars have a little bit more than delivery miles on them. So the only other exclusive I've seen was the same color. Did they all come in this color, or you could have get them in any you color? You could have gotten them in black or white as well. Okay, but only the three colors. Only the three colors. So it wasn't an accident. The only right. other one I saw was the same color. What okay. some people don't understand about exclusive is this. Every single Porsche that's built is built with all the standard equipment in it. Oh, okay. Things like the uh, like a carbon fiber right. mirror cover or the, the carbon fiber blackout on the window. What happens is the cars are completed in their standard form. Mm -hmm. Then after they come off the assembly line, they're brought into Porsche exclusive manufacturer. Those parts are discarded. Take, oh, and then put them. Exactly. Yeah. And people say, well, why is it so much more money yeah. for the exclusive option? It's because the original parts are literally destroyed. Right. They remove them and throw right. them away. You know, right down to the carbon fiber spoiler wing. 
So I would be the dumpster diver in that neighborhood. Yeah, no kidding, I'll tell you. <laughs> You'd find my legs sticking out of that dumpster all day long. Boy, the detail on that wheel is phenomenal. Every part of this car is just, it, it, I see something different every time I look at it. And I love those Michelin pilot, uh, pilot, sports. pilot sports. They're awesome tires. Yeah. Stick like glue. Yeah. We're building a tribute to Porsche drivers and racing teams. Oh, very cool. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, we are putting this exhibit together. So it's a living exhibit. It changes on a regular basis. We add, we detract, and um, sometimes we're lucky enough to have uh, amazing items that are at our fingertips. You can see some of the drivers from John yeah. Fitzpatrick, a gentleman by the name of Bruce Jenner. Yep. <laughs> was a driver and team owner for Porsche for many years. He's still a Porsche enthusiast. She is still a Porsche, Porsche enthusiast. enthusiast. <laughs> Caitlin is, a, is a, 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 just a great advocate for Porsche. So as you know, the Porsche Volkswagen Audi yep. relationship has always been very tight. Exactly. Back in 1970, Porsche at Volkswagen uh, cr wanted to create a mid-engine car that they thought would be just dynamite on the track. So they, the, the birth of the 914 or 916, depending on right. who you talk to, uh, gave way to this SCCA C-Class mid-engine race car. Yep. Um, they actually put the C-Class together to accommodate the mid-engine cars. And because of the, the, the legendary 911 oversteer, they wanted to be able to create something that would combat that. Yeah, and this definitely did. I mean, I've owned a number of 914s, 914s, 914.6, 1971, 914.6. And we even, back in the day, used to put water-cooled V8s in the middle of a 914. We put a radiator system up front. And believe it or not, I, I had one weighed at the track scales. And it still maintained pretty close to 50-50 weight distribution, sure. even with a big V8 in V8 it. V8 in there. Phenomenal handling car. I just love all of my 914s. They're the, just great know, cars. I wish I still had them now. <laughs> <laughs> Mid-engine Porsches are so intuitive. Yeah. You know, you wear them like a suit. Yeah. And you drive them like they're an extension of your body. Yeah. Oh, so absolutely. They're, they're for, you know, for, for uh, somebody who is a, a weekend uh, yes. enthusiast, yes. somebody who wants to take it on the track and enjoy it, the perfect car for that. Yeah. As you know, Galpin has been involved in racing since the 60s. We have our Galpin in Motorsports tribute here. Uh, it shows Ron Hornaday, right. um, Larry Fullerton, Mrs. Bachman, the beautiful, lovely, and talented <laughs> Jane Bachman is in there too. Yep. And we're very, very proud of our, our racing heritage and our commitment to motorsport. And a lot of dealers, they talk the talk, but they don't. They oh no! Exactly. They don't walk the walk. Yes. You know, Galpin, we do that. Absolutely. That's what we do. You know, we, we build the dream, and we, we we make sure that your ownership continues with that dream. Um, this car is a, a GT3 race car that's on loan to us by Competition Motorsports. Bob Fayetta has been a phenomenal benefactor here, mm. and any cars that he has that are off the track, we love to have here. Uh, GT3 class cars. You know, GT cars are always fun to watch and uh, incredibly powerful cars. I want to, if I can, get your attention on these diagrams and drawings you see. These are actual drawings of the 356 double overhead cam engine. These wow. are not replicas, these wow. are not these duplicates. These are the actual ones. These wow. are the actual documents that, um, that Bo found and uh, was able to procure for our museum down here. That is and amazing. You could see they hadn't been stored very well, right. but the message is there, yeah. and, and people will stand here for hours and just study study this stuff, because it's, it's, from, it's from the late 50s, early 60s. That is so awesome. A lot of fun stuff, a lot of fun stuff. I'm sure you know this, but I don't know that, that your viewers know this, before 9-11s were 9-11s, mm -hmm. they were 901s. Exactly. In 1964, yeah. Porsche decided to build the 901. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that moniker was owned by the Peugeot right. Motor Company. <laughs> they own 90 everything. Right. So a, a few hundred 901s managed to squeak off the assembly line. In that time, there was only one race prepared 901 that oh, was built I didn't know that. for the 1964 Le Mans. You are looking at the only oh, factory race prepared wow. 901 in existence. 
it's truly the, one of the pride uh, uh, points of our, of our collection and museum down here. And uh, I'll tell you a quick story. We had the 356 Club of Los Angeles uh -huh. here visiting. And a gentleman by the name of George Russo said, I heard, I have a 64 356. I heard that my car was being built as those 901s were being built. So we compared serial numbers. These two cars that you see, the 356 in front of it and this 901 are only four serial Seven numbers apart. apart. These cars are finally reunited <laughs> after all this time. So you have a 1964 356 in front of a 1964 901. The nose on this car was modified by Porsche to a 911 mm -hmm. when they had the problem with the 901. So people will say, well, those look like 911 grills. And they're right. right. They are. They're yeah. right. But that is a 901, a bona fide 901. <laughs> Part That's spectacular. Of, part of our, it, th this car is just, yeah. I, I love this car. It's just, it's just beautifully done. Yeah. And, and so many wonderful things that, that, you know, people have memories of these cars. Part of our, our this current exhibit is our tribute to the 356s. Mm -hmm. And we have three very special, very different 356s down here. First, we have a 1960 Drowse bodied Roadster. Mm. There are three basic body manufacturers mm -hmm. and designers for right. Porsche. Drows, Carmen, and uh, Reuters. Right. Very few Drows Roadsters were built. This car managed to survive through all that time and become restored. We show it with the Rudge wheels. And uh, this car is on loan to us by a gentleman by the name of Steve Cram from California. And it, Drows Roadsters are just such a pleasure to look at. The body lines flow so nicely. And driving them is a very special thing. There, there's just nothing like driving a 356. No, there really isn't. And, and how about one with Rudge knockoffs? I mean, that's just <laughs> crazy. Real, real Rudge knockoffs. One of the other very special 356s that evolved over time is what we call the sunroof coupe. Right. Now, back in 65, the argument was if we have a unibody car with all the strength in the roof and the floor, what happens to the structural integrity if we put a hole in it? Right. So that argument, which continues to this exactly. day, by the way, gave birth to the 65 coupe with a sunroof in it. But if you notice the sunroof is in there, mm -hmm. removing and replacing that sunroof requires almost a technician certification. <laughs> so you could be assured once that roof is in place, the body has absolutely no structural compromise right. whatsoever. Also, the, the, the famous Leitz uh, cargo racks, uh -huh. as you see yeah, on all three exactly. of these cars. These are authentic and period, period wow. correct. Uh, you're looking at a slate gray 356 right here. And, and, and probably the queen of our, of, our, of our showing down here is this beautiful 1961 356B Cabriolet. Yeah, that's just This gorgeous. is an unrestored... 31,000 mile car, which is wow. virtually original. The top has been replaced. The door had a little paintwork on it, but the rest of but the, the car- But the rest of the paint is original, original the 1961? Original paint, wow. original engine, original transmission, never opened. The cases are all factory really? sealed. Wow, that's so, incredible. Yeah, it's one of those one of those things that you, you just, you've heard about it, but never actually seen yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I love the little toy car because well, actually, a friend of mine, Samantha Coughlin, owns one. I heard dad bought it for her at Neiman Marcus That's uh, down in, in New York. And yeah, these are just. They, they were featured coolest. in the Neiman Marcus catalog in 1983. And then they came to Porsche dealerships in 1985. And what you see here is a Porsche Junior with a 2.2 horsepower Honda engine. This car has rack and pinion steering, disc brakes and a working manual three-speed gearbox. It, I, it's, it's so crazy, so, that's such a great car. Yeah, if you want your little one to learn how to drive a clutch, there this you is go. the way to do it. In fact, that's how she learned how to drive a clutch With by that, having this toy when go. she was growing up. That's a lot of fun there. We believe that the Porsche clubs drive the pride of ownership mm. for Porsche. It's one of those things. It's an ownership experience that, that's, that, that, people, that a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. It is. So Bo actually paints- It's a true culture. Without right? a doubt, yeah. without a doubt. More so than other brands. Yeah, I will much admit. more so, yeah. Bo has gone through hours and hours of, of sifting through information to find things that are, are of particular interest. Yes. He found a Christophorus 
um, March 1961 edition, which is the first English edition of the Porsche Christophorus mm. magazine, which is available yes. uh -huh. to Porsche owners, signed by Ferdinand Porsche. Wow. Um, every Christophorus features something specifically. Um, we have the first American edition, uh, Christophorus, Christophorus magazine yeah. from 1956. We have from February 97, we have the Christophorus that commemorates the water-cooled engine. Yeah. In February of 85, we commemorate the 959. In 1962, the only thing they felt they could commemorate in that edition was the miniskirt. <laughs> so that's the only Christophorus uh, magazine that has more pictures of a miniskirt than, than Porsches. So what's important is always important. Great little PCA award right there. And so, Vu, you gotta thank me. Look at that PCA front and center on this video. Absolutely. The connection to the Porsche Club for us is very important. Yeah. One of the things that we had in mind when we built this place was to have an event mm -hmm. center, was to have a place where the clubs could come and meet yeah. and, and feel at home. Uh, that's what that conference room is for. We have uh, the Porsche Club meets on a regular basis, and we offer them a place to meet and be surrounded by their, their, favorite, their pr favorite pastime. Very cool. Porsche in uh, Southern California is a big deal. Um, again, all of these items that were procured by Bo all tell a different story, whether it's an owner's manual, color charts. He has a specific um, gratitude for Vasek Polak, yes. who brought the brand to Southern California. Yeah. And he was able to, to obtain some really, really special items. The Vasek Polak racing items, um, racing equipment catalog came from the, the old-fashioned offset printing styles. Mm -hmm. So he actually was able to acquire the, the, the print cuts, which are very, very yeah, they're yeah, fun was, to look at. I was so fortunate growing up in the South Bay, and of course, Vasek was a great, great contributor, not only to Porsche, but for the whole South Bay area and cancer research after his wife passed away. Yep. Just a phenomenal man. It was great to be able to just drive down to his dealership and be able to look at these phenomenal cars. So really, a, a, not only a great uh, Porsche enthusiast, but also just a, a great contributor Person. to Southern sure, California. Sure. So when we first uh, started to embark on this Porsche journey, Bo wanted something very special, and he wanted to have a, a car that we could feature at events and things right. like that. So he went up to Monterey, and he bought this beautiful 1996 C4S Coupe, 40,000 mile car in ultraviolet purple. Mm -hmm. We have an amazing love and gratitude for the Japanese car culture called Bozozuko. Right. Bozozuko car culture features exaggerated spoilers right. and air dams. Yep. Um, so Bo commissioned Nakai-san mm. to come wow. and okay. convert his Very C4S nice. right. into an RWB. Right. So all that you see here, all the body parts, the wing, uh, the suspension was all done by hand by Nakai Sun. And here. It was yeah, done. And, and it, for was those, done uh, it was I done mean, at gas. Oh, it's done at gas, yeah. Job and Auto Sports. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, for, I know most of uh, the uh, viewers are going to know who RWB is, but if you don't, go to the website, take a look. There's so many videos out of Nakai Sun coming to America, coming to Porsches, and just redoing the Porsche just like he did this one. Really a special experience to be able to have that done. And just the, and this one is just over the top. It's just absolutely wonderful. It's a showstopper. It is. It is yep. absolutely wonderful. Yeah, it's, it delights people of all ages, car enthusiasts, people who aren't car enthusiasts. Yeah. It's just fun to look at, it and is. it's not even moving. It's a, it looks <laughs> like it's going 100 miles an hour. It does. So, it Joe, does. I, want, I want you to show me this, because I'll tell you, as a new grandfather, <laughs> I saw this, and I said, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to do this. Well, as I said earlier, <laughs> we're, it's constantly evolving, changing, growing. Um, this is the beginnings of our interactive center, and... One of the things that we love to see, we love to see kids embrace the culture yes. of Porsche. So we have these junior drafting tables, which kids can come, they, they could trace, they could trace a, a, a picture that they like, and they could take it home with them. And that's, uh, that's always a lot of fun for them. And the parents are content as the kids are having some fun. That is super cool. We have these amazing, Porsche toy push cars 
But what I, I want you to, I want you to actually feel that. Feel the engineering involved oh, in that wow. car. That is. That is just an indestructible toy. Look at this, yes. It is so Porsche-like. <laughs> it is so Porsche-like. It is Porsche -like. so overbuilt I have seen these toy. <laughs> exactly. I have seen these fly across the room, <laughs> and we've never had to replace one. So again, we believe that, that, that the Porsche lifestyle, the brand, um, <sighs> the experience of it, is really something that it, it, it's a pride of ownership that passes down yeah. from family member to, to other family members. We have families that visit here from across the country and uh, they come and they spend the day here. They have some lunch up at the restaurant and you know, I give them a tour like I've, like, like I've done with you. And um, it does build a, a specific pride. Yeah. And oh, there's absolutely. a pride of Porsche ownership. Yeah. And you know, it, it never leaves you. So. You know, as a former Porsche employee at a dealership, you know, back in 1979, I actually worked at Max Dalla Porsche Audi. Wow. Max actually hired me. I was a sales rep at Willem B. Hahn. You probably remember sure. Willem B. Hahn Auto Accessories. Max Dial was a customer of mine. And I was selling him some stuff. He goes, you need to come, you need to come to the store and I need to talk to you. And I talked to him and at 19 years old, sold uh, Max Dial an Audi 5000 wow. uh, as, a, as a test and then went to work for him about two weeks later. So not only am I a Porsche enthusiast, but really my first real executive job was a Porsche sales and leasing rep at Max Out Porsche Audi at the time in, in Inglewood, California. So sure. Porsche runs deep in my veins. I've almost always owned a Porsche. Uh, my last one in 1971, 911T, which I just love to drive. My wife enjoys it as, as well. So definitely a, an, a Porsche enthusiast and former Porsche employee. Joe, thank you so much oh, it's my for taking on us on this great adventure that you know that you can actually have by coming down to Santa Clarita Porsche and you can have the same adventure that we just had. But if you're not able to make it down here, at least Joe was kind enough uh, through the grace of Bo Bachman to be able to show us around and show you around as we did this. So once again, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. If you like these videos, please hit that like and then especially that follow button. And in fact, if you hit that follow button again, you can adjust those settings so that you'll be able to make sure you miss all the exciting content that we'll have for you in the future. We also have a lot of competitions and giveaways on there as well, so I don't want you to miss a single one of those. Thank you again. It's been great having you along. Take care. We'll see you next time.